a lot more community spread. Now this is going to drive our decision making. The other thing is we aren't making these decisions by ourselves. We will be contacting and working with public health solutions. We'll be contacting and working with our incident command group in the address to help us make these decisions. So this will not be uh, Mr. Alexander and myself sitting there saying, okay, well, what tier do you think we are in? You know, we want to get help from the officials that have the statistics and that know what's going on a lot more in our community than we may. So those are our tiers and those guide our, um, those will guide all of our moves. Those will guide all of our directions as we work with kids and as we work to bring school back. Um, I will tell you our goal is August 12th to start school. And that is the date that is on the calendar. That is where we are scheduled to start. So our goal is August 12th. We are hoping that nothing changes from now until August 12th. Because we know how quickly things can change. And so that's why um, we just have to stay flexible. Because um, one day, you know, we could be good. And then the next week, all of a sudden, we see the spike increases. And then that could change some of the things that we look at. But tier one, tier one is um, notable risk spread, and we are looking at schools in session for 100% of our students. Um, so as we look at tier one, we're looking at many different areas to try to focus on and to try to help students move forward academically, because we also know that there are gaps from being homeschooled for a quarter from being out of school for a quarter. Because I will tell you, I have two kids, one that will be a freshman and one that will be a fourth grader, and I know that we did not do as much as I wanted to get done. So we maybe did two hours of learning, maybe, if that's what I was able to get out of them that day. So I know that there are some gaps that have to be addressed. And that is why we want to get kids back in the classroom because we know that that is where academics occur. That is where strong academics can occur. I'm not saying academics can occur at home because they can and they're different academics, but we want them back in the classroom. So tier one, we are looking at different ways to ensure that all students are safe because learning is important, but their safety is just as important. And we want kids to feel safe. We want them to feel welcome. We want them to understand that this is a school environment and we are there. We may not be able to give you hugs this year, but we're going to give you plenty of fist bumps and then use some hand, hand, hand sanitizer. You know, we're going to try to make sure that we keep that environment conducive to an educational setting because our kids need that. They need to know that this is a safe spot. They need to know that it's that secure spot where they can come and learn. Um, our classrooms. As we look at the classrooms in, um, at Tier 1, we're going to look at different measures that we can utilize in our classrooms. One of the biggest things that we'll be focusing on is keeping static groups together. So by a static group, we're talking about maybe this third grade group or this kindergarten group or preschool group. Now, I will tell you, it becomes a lot trickier when you look at middle school and high school. And so that is kind of a piece that we're looking at. How do we work that? The other piece we're looking at middle school and high school then, if we can't keep static groups together, how do we limit interactions maybe? So how do we limit interactions with um, our sixth grade class with our eighth grade class? So maybe how do we schedule our lunches to where we keep just eighth graders all together or just sixth graders all together? So trying to keep um, as much static as we possibly can as we look at the classroom environment. Additionally, in every single tier, we will promote good hygiene habits. So we will be taking breaks to make sure that we wash our hands. We will be taking breaks to make sure that we clean off surfaces. We will be asking our custodians to walk around and clean door handles and make sure our bathrooms are clean. Um, just to make sure that, just like they normally do, just to make sure that we ensure that our facility is as germ-free as we can possibly make it. We know that there are going to be germs out there. We know that that is always existing. So we are going to work with our um, custodial staff to try and make sure that we keep it as clean as we possibly can. We also realize that um, some of the other components of school are very important. Recess. We know that recess is a huge piece to preschool, to grade you know, K through five. I would even say if you ask middle school teachers, it's probably very important for those sixth or eighth graders to get outside. 
So the thing is, again, we just practice those good hygiene habits. We will still go out to recess, but we will be washing our hands and making sure that we come back in and making sure that we are not licking our hands as we are on the equipment, so that, you know, that we are continuing to keep in those static groups, but just continuing to practice those good things that we see all of you teaching your kids. Um, the next piece that as we look at tier one, we may look at a early start. Um, we do have a calendar that would start us August 3rd, would be an option if for instance we get a um, we get state recommendation or recommendations from um, our local healthcare professionals that say we really need you to start earlier so that you guys can be out of school in December the whole month of December so we will look at those the other pieces that we're looking at are maybe remote learning options so maybe start keep our start date the same but then put remote learning in come December if we need to um, close school at that point in time the other piece is maybe even a delayed start. We have a calendar that um, looks at starting after Labor Day, just in case something happens. But right now, I will tell you, our plan is to start August 12th. We are not looking at those other two plans, but we have them in our back pocket just in case we need to look at those options. So they are there. Okay, tier two. So this is uh, where we would see the more moderate risk or spread. Um, as we look at this, there are a couple of different things that we will begin to work with. Um, and this is where we see probably more spread coming into Nebraska and maybe surrounding communities. Um, begin adjusting our practices to reduce the number of interactions occurring. So we will look at our scheduling options, especially middle school and high school. We may look at where we have block scheduling, so our kids are only out in the hall four times during the day rather than eight times that they are with a normal first through eighth period day. Um, we are looking at that. We're looking at limiting the number of students sitting together at lunch. So our lunch tables may go down to only four students sitting together. Um, we may do at the elementary, we may put students in the classrooms eating lunch. So again, trying to keep those static groups together but trying to limit the number of interactions that we see. Um, we will limit gathering areas. So when our students arrive, at the beginning of the day, they will go directly to their classrooms. So they won't arrive and they will not congregate in areas where they can mingle with other kids. So we'll again try to limit those big gatherings that we have um, with Tier 2. We will also do random assessments for temperatures. Um, and so we'll take and we'll say, okay, every fifth child, we are just going to screen. Um, we aren't going to do full-fledged temperature checks until we get to Tier 3, but Tier 2 will just be a random assessment. The other thing that is really awesome about each one of our staff members and each one of our students is that they do communicate when they don't feel well. And our staff members are watching their kids that they have, and they're monitoring the kids. And they already do this. They've done this from the get-go. If a student shows up and they have their head down on the table and that is not normal for that child, they're going to have a conversation with that child just to see if that child is well, what's happening, and then maybe do a little bit more screening um, with that child. So again, as we go through Tier 2, um, we will again look at those measures of making sure we practice good hygiene, making sure that we have those pieces in place um, as we continue on. So Tier 3. Tier three is where we're starting to see um, community spread, and we are starting to see more pieces that really are going to concern us. Um, so this is where we actually might move to a hybrid approach. And I know that we have over, last time I checked, we had over 700 um, parent and community members that have completed that survey, which is awesome. And one of those questions was, what approach would you like? What approach would work for your family? And I'm going to say I don't think any approach would work unless they're in school for my family. But what, what approach could you make work? Because that's the thing is we know that if we get here, we have to look at those options. So as we look at Tier 3, we will definitely start eating in the classroom. And as I said before, we will conduct temperature checks and screenings when students arrive. Um, just to make sure they don't have symptoms. We're asking the parents to conduct self-screening. We're asking kids to start figuring out how do they feel. We're asking our staff members to stay home 
We're asking kids to stay home because we know sometimes we have staff members who it is much more difficult to stay home or than to come to work sick. That's, we can't have that. So we're asking staff members to, you know, take care of their lesson plans, do their lesson plans and stay home when they don't feel well. We're asking kids to do that too. Um, so as we look at this, here are a couple of the different options that we look at. We can look at A, B days. So we can say A is a Monday and a Thursday, B would be a Tuesday and a Friday. On Monday and Thursday, we're gonna have letters A through L, or students with last names or family names that start with A through L are gonna to come to school. On B days, it would be M through Z. Because our goal really at tier three is to get our buildings down to 50%. 50% capacity so that we can then work with, again, making groups as small as we possibly can. Um, another option that we have is morning or afternoon. So again, we would still keep with the A through L or N through Z, and then we would have mornings with the A through L, N through Z, and all the time during each and every tier, we will have grab and go breakfast, and we will have lunch that will be pre-plated. So when we start August 12, the kids will not go in and have, touch the fruit or touch the vegetables.